So a couple of weeks ago, I was in my local garden centre just getting some plants and that kind of thing for the garden, and I came across this jar, like a jar pot thing. I'm not entirely sure how to describe it. It had a tap on it. I think you put cocktails in it. Anyway, I walked past and I can't stop thinking about it. You see, it's pretty much completely different to any of the other things I've ever set up. Um, it looks different and I've got an idea that's completely different. As, well, not completely different, it'll still be plants and livestock. But anyway, I'm just gonna go and get it. I, I'm not finalized on any ideas yet. Get it back here, have some thoughts, get some stuff for it in the fish shop, have a chat with Matt, it's in there. Just, just bounce some ideas around, you know? Yeah, this is the one that I'm after. Looks quite cool, the bottom comes off. Got a tap as well, I'm not sure I'll use that, but it could be useful for water changes. Then nice lid as well, look. Absolutely perfect, it's 35 quid. Yeah, I'm going with it. Right, and we've also got, whilst we're here, because I was having a think, we're gonna make this whole thing a closed ecosystem. So we need clean up crew and that kind of thing. And we, we don't want fish in this because that'll produce too much waste, I think, for, a, unless you had maybe like one tiny thing. Yeah. But no, we're not gonna do that because it's not suitable for fish. Uh, we've got five really shrimp down here. And I've also picked up, is that, is it, what's it called again? Uh, frog bit. It is frog bit, I was going to say. Limnobium. That's what you said, Limnobium, and I was like. Limnobium, I can't remember his second name, but I was yeah. thinking, what's he saying? It's clearly frog bit. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a few rams horns now as well. So these will be really good just to get that whole sort of system going, but they're not going to be so um, detrimental in terms of waste production. Yeah, they won't produce really, they'll probably do more good than they will produce more waste because they're going to be helping with your algae and all your bits and pieces, that'd yeah, be ideal. Yeah, exactly. And then that frog bit as well is just going to pull and grow and yeah. I'm saying closed ecosystem. I'm going to have to at some point remove some of that from yeah. the surface because yeah. there'll be, you won't see anything. No, it'll just be covered. <laughs> Sweet, let's go. Yeah, here it is in all its glory in the studio. So for size reference, look, that's a four foot tank behind it that's quite tall as well. So, I mean, remember this section is just, just got nothing. Like, you, I, I don't know what to do with that. I'll probably just fill it with gravel for decoration. Um, and then we could do something all on the top. Oh, it's exciting. I should probably get started. I mean, we're gonna need a substrate system first, aren't we? That's better, we have our set. Um, <laughs> take the lid off, look. Nice and thick, just put that down to the side. Yeah, so here's the basic shape of it. Now that's the reason I only got shrimp and snails because, I mean, some people would definitely say you could put a better in it and you know, like Asia and areas, Eastern areas, they, they put fish in tiny, tiny things. Um, it's just, I guess it's just a cultural thing. I mean, we don't, so I won't as well. It might be a really good place to bring up some fry or something like that, but we're just gonna go with shrimp and snails for this one. Now, nutrients, first and foremost, I've got these little bags here. Most of you have seen these before, but look, little bag, we can put some soil in here, aqua soil, and then it'll sit in the middle and we can put sand all around it. Now the roots will find their way in, but it won't look horrible or you know come to the surface and things like that. I just find it's a really good way of doing this. And I've just checked, I've got a ton of spare aqua soil down in this little tub here. It's got sand in that as well in that section, and it's got gravel in bags there. Um, I'm only interested in that aqua soil. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna take. There should be plenty there. There's not a huge amount in general, but enough for what we need for this project. And a really good thing is these mesh bags are all plastic, even the zips are, so you don't get any rusting or anything like that either. Okay, sweet, next job is to cap all of that with a sand. I'm gonna go for just a plain sort of normal sandy sand, you know, like, I don't know, tan color. But you can choose whatever you want. I mean, I got, I got in trouble last time in the comment section because I said don't use like a luminous pink or green gravel. You could use whatever you want, no judgment here. As long as it's fine enough to get some plant roots into it, that's all we need to worry about. Yeah, here's the sand, look. It's just like generic play sand, super cheap. You can get this in so many places as well, like hardware stores and that as well. Uh, but it does the job really well. So when we're adding our sand, we want to get loads in the foreground like that. Um, and we want to bank it up to the back. Now, I've decided to have the tap to the side. I just think it looks a little bit better. Um, but I'm put, putting more sand at the back there, look. Obviously we need more than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, you can use your hands, obviously. And I'm gonna sort of move it to the back area, sloping forwards. 
I don't know how this is going to look with water in it. I know when you do it with bowls, it can look a bit weird, uh, the actual angle, but this is a cylinder, so I can't remember last time how it actually went. Okay, there we go, and we've got our angle um, to come to the side for you to see. There you go, that shows it quite well, doesn't it? Now, I was going to be putting like something at the bottom, but I quite like the look of it so far. Maybe I'll add later on, but yeah, it looks pretty good. Definitely need to take that sticker off though, don't I? <laughs> oh no, they've done that thing where it's like that extra tacky stuff. Oh, just don't put stickers on things. <laughs> right, I cleaned it up as best I could. No, that's a lie, not as best I could. As long as I was willing to spend on it, it's still a bit smeary, I don't even care. It's so annoying. I'm sure there's like a chemical that would strip it. I can't even use a razor blade because it's not glass, it's acrylic, it would just scratch the hell out of it. Anyway, that's not important. Let's move on to the next part, which is hardscape. And as I always say, in small little um, sort of capsules like this, capsules, is that? <laughs> I'll go with that. In small capsules like this, you need to keep the hardscape small, like minimal, because it just takes over in no time, because we've got plants and that to add as well, haven't we? So here's what I've got initially, just a couple of tiny little twigs. I don't even know yet if it's gonna fit. We, remember, it can't come above the top because we've got the lid to go on as well. So yeah, this one might be a bit too tall. Let's just see, put it in like that. We push it down, of course. Right, there we go, that's right in, nice and deep. Is the lid gonna fit? Yes, with about a centimeter spare. Okay, cool, that looks good. Do I need the extra stick as well? Just to add a little bit more detail, just let that fall in. Try to maneuver it around in a way that makes it look a bit more natural. Yeah, something like that, that could work. Nice little like sort of fallen tree area. Like I say, you don't want too much, it's gonna take over otherwise. We want some stones in there as well on the bottom, small ones just to sort of add, add that sort of islandy look I wanna go for. So out here is some of my rock and wood collection. And the problem is I haven't actually got any small rocks. I've used them all for other escapes. I've just got loads of big, big ones like here. Big, big, just just big. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to take some out and just smash them up with a hammer. Then we just use the smaller pieces then. It doesn't look as nice, so you have to watch what edges show, because when you break it, it's a different color in that, but we'll, we'll work with what we've got. Right, oh, I'm out of breath. I didn't film it because I didn't think it'd be very interesting, but I've smashed the rocks up into smaller pieces. And you see what I mean? Some of the edges are like dark compared to the rest. Oh, it still looks good though, doesn't it? I mean, we can work around it anyway. I'm just gonna put those in like an island formation. So bigger bits in the middle, working its way out to smaller pieces. So the main thing I'm actually trying to do there is just create some weight on top of that wood, to be honest. And um, that probably would be enough to hold it, but I don't want to risk it. I'm going to put some glue on as well. Cyanoacrylate super glue gel. This stuff uh, works a treat. The gel form is best because it keeps its shape rather than dripping everywhere. And it's just a case of squeezing it on. Oh, look, there's me saying it doesn't drip everywhere. <laughs> I didn't mix it enough. We'll try again. It's just a case of squeezing it on so that the blob touches like the two contact points. Simple as that. Yeah, sweet, so that's locked down that smaller piece and then the other bigger rocks will hold down the bigger one and it's buried in the sand, so we're all good with that. Now I managed to break up some teeny tiny pieces here as well, so that adds some great detail in all those edges. Now we don't want to be shy with this, just chuck them on. <laughs> They're all gonna get moved around when we uh, start planting anyway, so don't worry too much. A few more in that section, some over there. Hardscape complete. Now I want to add in some plants to this. I want to start with a Java fern. You might be thinking, oh yeah, what am I going to do for lighting? Well, at the moment I'm just using my studio light to light it, but I'm not actually putting any tech on this at all. There's going to be no filter and no lighting. What I'm going to use is the ambient lighting in the room. So for instance, over here on my computer desk, but I'm just currently editing the video. Um, I might just move my microphone standy thing, and that's for voiceovers that I use that for, put my phone in and just use that. Um, but it gets quite a lot of light from that tank, or there's also the option of putting it just to the side over here um, of the, of the an angelfish tank, isn't there? So I'm not sure yet, but see when I'm done really. But how will the plants go with just ambient lighting, I hear you ask? Well, look at this. So underneath my better tank here, I've got like a little tank underneath. And it, oh, that nearly fell. <laughs> it's just had a load of little baby Java ferns that I've just chucked in there, forgotten about, and there's basically no light getting to them, and they're still nicely vibrant and green and looking good. So I'm gonna use these to create a little sort of mini Java thingy in the middle. <laughs> okay, this is cool. I managed to find a piece in there that had a little bit of Anubius on it as well. So we can push that into the gap and loop some of the Anubius underneath there. I'm being careful, I don't want to break off that glue, do I? 
loop it underneath. Oh my goodness, it's already looking so cute and natural. That's it, you only need a little tiny bit, don't you? Look at that. Yes, we're looking sweet. Right, let's count with the plant in. I want to do some itty bitty plants. Something called Cryptocryne Parva. It's just a tiny little one in the foreground. I'm not massively worried on this one, like I usually am, about super fast growing stem plants. I'm going to use the frog bit in the top for the nutrient absorption, and that should work an absolute treat. We're not putting a load of livestock in it, just a, just a few shrimp and that. Oh, I haven't shown you yet, have I? Yeah, I put the uh, shrimp and the frog bit in this little bowl here. This is tank water. Look at them, they're all on the bottom of it already. <laughs> Sorry, I've just frightened you. Yeah, just chill out. I'll be, I'll be putting you in your new home soon. So I've actually got three plants here that I want to use. They're all from Tropica. This, I've had them in storage actually for a couple of months, except this one I had a month. This is dwarf hair grass. So that'll look really cute in there, just a few tufts of it. This is the cryptocryne I was telling you about. There's the label. It says it's medium difficulty, but I've not struggled with it in low light situations. And then the Hygrophila pinnatifida, which just gives an instantly amazing jungly sort of look. Love that. So once you take the rock wall off the parva, you're left with this. It's just like, it's like a whole couple of sections of it. And you can just literally, or gently though, snap it off from the bottom in the roots and it splits up in loads of different plantlets. Look, look at that. So we'll actually get like five or six from that little group and just randomly put them around in the sand and it'll look really good. I'm not gonna be too sort of thoughtful with this. It's just going in. There we go. You can feel that went actually into the bag that we got underneath there. <laughs> so in that middle section, there's not quite as much sand because I was, you know, conscious of putting all the hardscape there anyway. But at the front and the edges here, yeah, in we go. We don't want anything too close to the front though, because it might it might look a bit weird. I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see. The, the grass might look quite good there. And as always, the hair grass comes in these little sort of pots. They've got like a liquid in them that keeps them alive look. And all you've got to do is sort of break them up like that. There's like a middle section you take out, and then you can just break off sections of it. I like to roll them up in my fingertips, and you can plant it like that. Or you can go even smaller if you want, because it'll look better actually. In this kind of setup, it'll be better in tiny tufts, won't it? And there's no way I'm going to need all of that either. <laughs> now, the most important thing of all of this, in my opinion, is just not to worry too much. Just get stuff in there, chuck it in, have some fun with it. And don't, don't worry if it's perfect. It's not going to be if it's your first time. But the thing is with the plants, they grow in so beautifully that anything that you think doesn't look great to start with, Within a month, it's going to look awesome anyway, because plants do that. They go where they want to. Now, this hair grass might struggle with the lower light. I mean, the best I'm really going to hope for is that it just stays alive and where it is, just for a bit of detail. It might spread, but incredibly slowly if it does. That's fine. I understand that. Not a problem. But hopefully, given that there's a half decent amount of light in the area that I'm going to put it, it, it should do okay. I mean, it might not. If it doesn't, so what? <laughs> okay, next up, the Pinnatifida. This is such a beautiful plant, isn't it? Look at that. It's actually, I think it's a sort of fern or at least an epiphyte. It creeps on different, different branches and stuff. It doesn't have to be planted in the substrate, but in this instance, I'm going to just because it'll, uh, it'll go in there really nicely in that back area. Get off as much of the rock wool as you can. Try and keep intact some of the uh, some of the roots, a good way of doing that actually. Take a fork and just run it through. I should have just done that at the start, shouldn't I? <laughs> there we go, so we've got a nice little root system and the plant looking gorgeous. I'm just gonna push it in nicely in this back area. There we go, gone quite far down because I don't want it floating up. Push a little bit of sand over the area you've planted it. And then when you fill up the water, the water should pull downwards on the sand on top locking it all in place. Okay, that's all looking great, but there's one more plant I wanna add that I've had growing in one of my sort of storage tanks for over a year and it looks so good. It's a very simple plant. It'll probably creep very quickly, but it'll be very good for the whole environment, the ecosystem, you know, using nutrients, that kind of thing. This is the plant that I'm talking about, Sagittaria. I'll put up what it is up there. <laughs> I only want a couple of little sprigs of it. We've got loads to choose from, and that should just look so good in that little sort of mid-ground area to the sides. Haha, <laughs> there we go. Nice little handful. That's just look beautiful, shouldn't it? So vibrant. So we've got a couple of longer ones. Put those in at the side. And then one this side as well. Oh, I'm already loving it. I'm not even filled up with water yet. <laughs> and then all the short ones can sort of go a bit more randomly. Not a lot of sand in that middle area, but that should, should lock down. I mean, it's going to be caught in amongst the uh, hardscape as well. And this will also be good because if the hair grass fails, this stuff definitely won't. So uh, yeah, it'll fill in any gaps. Not a lot of red in this. Well, not any red in this. The pinnatifida will have sort of 
lighter hues as it grows underwater. But um, yeah, I just wanted to go for green. Who doesn't love green, you know? Right, looking good. That is everything done. I don't want to overdo it. That's, that's more than enough, to be honest, already. And I'm going to fill it up now. So if this is the only tank you've got, and you've got this jar or a jar similar, you wanted to try something, you're going to have to use dechlorinated tap water. So you put your tap water in, and you put a dechlorinator in that makes it safe. And then you also need to add in some beneficial bacteria as well. We'll get to that in a minute, but I'm not using tap water. I'm going to be using the water from this tank. It's well established. It's super, super clean. It's got like real good levels of everything in it and I can completely trust it. So that's going to go in. Now there is actually a load of babies in here. So I want to make sure I don't catch any. Yet yeah, we're good. Now if I was to pour the water straight in there now, it would disturb all the sand plants will float up, it'll be absolutely awful. So I'm going to put in some paper towel just in this bottom area and pour on top of that really slowly. We, we don't want to rush this, this process at all. Just take your time with it, it'll be fine. <laughs> don't do what I just did. I didn't realise the tap was open and it all started pouring out. Good to know it works though, isn't it? I've made a big hole there though, where the sand was. I'll just fill that in quick. <laughs> there we go. I was getting worried then, thinking that it was just leaking. Then I was like, duh, you've not closed it. Okay, so this bottom part here just got a little bit messed up. I've got a little rod don't really have to do this, I guess, but I just thought I might as well make it a little bit neater. I'm not really one massively for neatness, really, but I don't know, this one felt like it needed a bit, bit of tidying up at that bottom bit. Okay, there we go, that'll do. Just gonna give the uh, inside of the glass a bit of a clean with some tongs and a bit of kitchen roll or paper towel. We call it kitchen roll in the UK. Do we, do we all say that or is that just me? I don't even know anymore. Right guys, it's now been a day since I set the jar up. I just wanted to give it overnight just to make sure that this tap wasn't leaking at all. Like, and I'm pleased to say it, it's not. I don't know why I didn't trust it to be honest because it only leaked the first time because of my own fault of leaving it open. <laughs> anyway, this is perfect because now we can put in our floating plants, our shrimp and our snails. Now I have to be a little bit careful here because we've obviously got all of the shrimp on, on the frog bit. Oh, see, there's still one caught in there. Come out. This one here, look, he's stuck. We've got to get this off, there, get, there we go. All right, now have a little check. Everything good? Yep, everything seems good. So our shrimpies are in the bottom here, look. I think I've got five in the end. Did I get five? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five red really shrimp. And there's some snails in there, but I'll add a few more than that, to be honest. And in goes the frog bit. One that side, one that side. Look at that, there's like offshoot babies growing already on the uh, frog bit, so that's cool. I mean, it's probably gonna grow really fast. Oh, look at that, and inside the water, it looks even better, doesn't it? The shrimp are gonna love that. Okay, in go the snails, look, completely vary in sizes. There's a big one, there we go, look, look at the size of that big one. Yeah, that's all of them. So we've got about like seven or eight in there. I really love that big one, um, but that's okay. That, they're gonna be the main producers of waste and algae, and we've only got five shrimp to go in as well, haven't we? Right, I just realized we got lucky at the fish shop. We've got six shrimp. Come on then, all of you. It's easy if you just turn the whole thing inside out and just dip it in the water, to be honest. Get a bit of crud going, but that's all right. There we go. <laughs> Straight away, look, right up in that Amazon frog bit. They seem to love it, which is cool. Could be a nice little breeding place for them. Oh, there's one there, look, going on the other one. He was on the Java fern there. And even down the bottom area. Nope, just the snails at the moment. Oh yeah, there we go. This one's having a little look at the grass. Come on over, it's just cool, isn't it? It's just a cool little thing. What I love about this whole setup is you can put it anywhere. Now, if I was at home, I'd like to have it in the middle of my table and it would be something to talk about, wouldn't it, if you had people around. Really interesting to come in and have a look at. You know, there's always going to be something going on and as we progress as well, there's going to be way more sort of snails and shrimp. I could even add some different kinds of shrimp. Um, but for now, I just want to keep it at that. Basically, the bioload of what we've got here is not enough to cause like water pollution. The plants will clean the waste or the, they'll use the nutrients ammonia, that kind of thing that, that the uh, snails and the, and the shrimp produce, it will use it faster than they're going to produce it. So that means that, you know, with a couple of little water changes per day, to start with at least for the first week, I'll probably take out about that much, place it with fresh water or, or tank water, and it's going to be 
absolutely perfect. There should be no die off, no problems there to the fish and the shrimp, and it should just be magical. Yeah, I'm gonna say magical.